Okay, everybody, this is uh, chapter eight, section two, and we're going to be looking at multiplying ex uh, expressions and also then uh, looking at factoring, okay? So there's a couple of things uh, going back to uh, chapter seven when we dealt with exponents and some of the rules that we had back then. We need to make sure that we uh, remember them this time, okay? So uh, there's a couple of properties that we have to have. One's just to distribute. And I think we already kind of know what that is. And another one's factor. So that's kind of going to be new for some of us, right? So to be able to distribute, we're going to multiply a term through to all the other terms. So it's typically something outside of set of parentheses. You got to multiply it to everything inside, okay? Now, we've done this in the past. But now we're kind of throwing the exponents in with it, and we got to remember what to do with that. So first off, I like to remember that whenever I don't see an exponent on a variable, make sure that you put one there, okay? And you're multiplying here. You're going to multiply all the way through, okay? So I've got to remember when you multiply exponents, you want to, when you're multiplying, multiplying, sorry, Variables with exponents. You need to add the exponents. Okay. You're still going to multiply the coefficients, like this first one, the negative 5 and the 2. I'm going to multiply those like regular numbers. So negative 5 times 2 is a negative 10. But then when I multiply the x's, so they're both the bases are the same here, I'm going to add the exponents. So one and, th one and two gives me three. Okay. Now going to the next term, I still have this negative five, but now it's times is positive three. That's going to get me another negative number, in this case, negative 15. But the bases x are the same. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply, or when I multiply them, I'm really adding the exponents. So one plus one is two, okay? And then I'm gonna multiply the out here with the constant that's inside. Now it's a negative times negative, so that's positive. And five times eight is 40, but the five had an X on it, so 40 X, okay? I wanna go back and kind of look at it, make sure I have this in standard form. That, so in this case, it means the exponents are all in descending order and it goes three, two, one. So I'm good to go there. Okay. All right. So this next one, we're just kind of writing this backwards. You know, typically we, we know the fives over there, but I can still distribute this way. Okay. So five times nine is 45. Okay. Now, a positive 5 times a negative 2b is going to give me a negative number. 5 times 2 is 10, and there's a b on that, so 10b, all right? So, no, there was no extra exponents and, and bases that were the same. That was pretty straightforward. I think we've pretty much done those a lot in the past. Now, but since we've kind of done the standard form stuff, we really should write this in standard form. So, remember, variables come first. So this would really be negative 10 B to the first, and this 45 is positive, so plus 45. So I just flipped it around, but this is the proper way to write things now, okay? All right, so the next property is factor. This is gonna be big throughout this whole chapter, so it's important we kind of get off to a good start here. Okay, this is the opposite of distributing. So when we distribute it, we multiply. So the opposite of distributing must be to divide. Okay, so you're going to be dividing here. You're going to pull out the GCF. The GCF is the greatest common factor of all the terms that you might be given. Okay, so you're looking for the biggest number and and the biggest power too so when we start getting into numbers with bases and exponents and powers of exponents we're going to have to be able to look at all those and you're going to pull out the biggest possible factor of everything okay 
So let's look at the let's look at this first example, 2y plus 12. I'm looking for a number that I can divide that's the same out of both of those terms. Okay, so you got you have to know your multiplication tables here and be able to think it kind of backwards. But I think I can take a two or divide a two out of each one. So the two becomes my greatest common factor. And then I'm going to take each one and divide it by that two. So really these twos go away. It leaves me with y in that first term. Okay. And I'm dividing the second or the constant 12 by two. And so 12 divided by two is six. So I've taken out the greatest common factor. All right. There's no, there's a one right here. And I got this constant. There's nothing else that I could take out of those two. So I know that this is the biggest thing that the two had in common. Okay. Now, let me just show you. I'm going to distribute this back through. I want to get the same thing I started with. So two times y is 2y, and two times 6 is 12. That's the same thing that we started with. Okay. So I know that I factored that out correctly. Okay. All right, we're going to look at this next one. So uh, if you got that written down, first I, I like to look at just the coefficients. Is there something that goes into both the 3 and the 18? Well, 3 is kind of a you know unique number. Only 1 and 3 goes into 3, so it must be a 3. So 3 does go into 18 six times, okay? But I have this x and x here. This is x squared, and then I have an x to the first. Now, when I look at this, to get the greatest common factor of variables with powers, I'm really looking at the smallest one, because that they're going to have that in common between the two. So I could take out a power of x also. Okay? So that's going to become my GCF, 3x. The threes are going to cancel out. And remember, there's a one right here. If you go back to the last chapter, you ask yourself, where is it bigger, top or bottom? Well, in this case, it's bigger on the top. By how much? By x to the first. Okay? The 18, and this, the minus sign is going to stay. 18 divided by 3 is 6. And since I got x to the first on top and x to the first on the bottom, they kind of cancel each other out. So here is my factoring of that problem. Okay? So really, really have to practice this and get good at this. you got to have good multiplication skills because if you can't multiply, you can't divide, and we have to be able to divide here, okay? All right, so here we go. We're going to practice this one. I'm going to let you guys do this one on your own. If you could go ahead and write that out. Remember, you want to distribute it, so you know, be careful with your signs first. Remember, you're going to distribute it through. And remember, multiply the coefficients together like regular old numbers. And don't forget, there's a one right here, too. But you're going to add the exponents when you have, you know, bases that are the same. Okay? So I'll let you do that uh, really quick. And then I'll put the, if you want to pause it, I'll put the solution up in a, in a second here. Okay, so a negative 1 times a 9 is a negative 9 x to the seventh, I add the exponents, okay? The next one, negative one x to the third times negative two x to the third is gonna give me a positive. So one times two is two, and I add the exponents, so I get six. Okay, last one, I have a negative one x to the third times seven, so it's just negative seven x to the third. So hopefully you did well on that. Add the exponents. The last, this last one that we had to do, you know, remember, you know, you're still going to multiply the, the coefficients together. All right. This next one, we're doing GCF. We're going to find the GCF first, then we're going to factor it. So let's just look at the coefficients first here. What goes into 5 and 25 and 45? Okay. So hopefully you know that anything ends in a 5, 5 is going to go into it. So I know I could take out a 5, okay? Uh, I'm going to look at the exponents. Remember, there's a 1 right there. So I look at the x's, and the smallest 
it's kind of the oxymoron thing. I'm looking for the greatest common factor, but I'm going to pull out the smallest power. So that's that. So I could take out a 5x from everything. Okay. So now I'm going to set up my parentheses and whatever, you know, I divide these, whatever I have left over goes in the parentheses. So this first one, the fives cancel each other out. Remember, there's a one here. So where is it bigger, top or bottom? It's bigger on the top. By how much? By two. Okay. 25 divided by five right here is going to give me five. Once again, that's got a one. Where is it bigger? It's bigger on top. By how much? By one. Okay. 45 divided by five gives me nine. And I got an X to the first and an X to the first, so they cancel each other out. So there's, there's my factoring, okay? So I'm writing this all out. I'm kind of talking each step out just so that you kind of make a habit. Um, you'll get better at this the more you practice it, okay? So I'm going to let you try the next one on your own. 13 is, once again, a unique number. It's only, it's a prime number. So... You know, I could take a one out of everything, but that's not really helping me. And it is a greatest common factor sometimes, but in this case, it's not. So 13 must go into 26. So think this one out a little bit, all right? You can hit pause again and then come back and hit play, and I'll have the solution up for you. Okay. So I know that I could take out a 13. Okay, and then I'm going to look at my powers of x. My smallest power is a 3, and I could take a 3 out of 5, but I can't take 5 out of 3. So hopefully you're understanding when I'm going greatest common factor, I'm looking for the smallest exponent. So I could take out an x to the third, okay? And then in my parentheses, what do I have left over? Okay, it's a 3. 13, so cancel each other out. Where is x bigger, top or bottom? It's bigger on the top by how much? By 2. Okay. 13 goes into 26 twice. And then, you know, where is it bigger, top or bottom? It's the same. So that means it cancels itself out. And there's my factors. Okay. So it's kind of nice that the last step, typically, the, the exponents are going to cancel each other out because you pick the biggest one. And it's probably written in standard form. Okay. Okay. So hopefully, um, you know, the, the factoring thing is going to be huge. You're just going to have to keep practicing it. You're just going to have to get good at it. You're going to have to make sure that your multiplication skills are good. Um, you're, you got to make sure that you can figure out no, what numbers go in. Remember, it's great as common factors. Sometimes we don't always pick the biggest one and you're just going to have to, um, there's some other little tricks that we're going to have to kind of talk about as we move along, but you're going to have to make sure you, you know your stuff and pick out the biggest um, coefficient and then find the, the smallest power that goes into everything. Okay. All right. If you need anything, make sure you get a hold of me. Thanks.